Good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year to 2024. I want to start the year with a little bit a back view and seeing what we achieved in 2023 with Nintex Process Manager. We want to have a look into our process modeling BPMN 2.0 capability as far as we released this so far. Many more things to come. Process variant management. A couple of things I want to go through a little bit more in detail. And then process archiving, which is a long time in the making. Let's start first with our process modeling business process management 2.0 capability. If you have a look into Process Manager, now we have a capability released, as mo most of you will know, uh, in Process Modeling. Process Modeling is the language of the process specialists. It's a more technical way. It's a lot of people know this within Visio flowcharting. It's a flowchart. It's boxes. It's developed to build end-to-end -end processes with a global accepted and verified language, BPMN 2.0. So in Process Manager, where do we start? So first of all, within our configuration, we have a role-based user access capability to enable process modeling. Uh, within there, as long as this is switched on and you are entitled to use this, we can select roles who have then people attached to it, who has then the capability to use business process modeling. If this is set, where do we go from there? So we can have then under processes, and I'm obviously entitled to do this, I have my process models. So if I look in there on my demo site, I have already existing process models in the total number of 10. So I can always see how many model models do I have, who is actually the process expert and owner. So this is aligned and will be visible or is visible within the process groups in Process Manager. So if I want now to start a new model, not nothing easier than that. We go in the processes, new process, create a process model. We need to still to assign where does this process model actually lives. So I want to do this under develop products and services, select. Now I follow the same principle because we need still to scope this out. Um, develop of a new product. Then who is my owner? So in my case, I will choose myself. So this comes already from the people picker in the background. So anyone who has user access to the application, uh, we need to standardize how we develop new, new products. So this gives me the scope. So anyone who knows Process Manager knows that we do this always. And then there's a new thing. So we have now the canvas where we can create our flowchart, right? So this is really from a BPMN perspective, from a flowcharting, the state of the art. So here we can now drill in new activities. So what do we have to do first? So I can go this way or I say, okay, we want to go step by step. What do, what do we have actually first as a trigger point? So in our case, we develop a new product. Let's say the trigger point is a product idea. So this gives me now the first step as a trigger. And now I want to have a task um, added to this. So my first task level in here would be a review product idea. And then having maybe a proof product idea. And then we do another step in here and saying um, validate pricing and maybe uh, develop, develop, go to market and um, then maybe we go um, review with production team.
Okay, and then maybe I have an endpoint there and saying, ready for production. So this is an easy way to bring my ideas to the plate, to the, on the on the canvas, and and thinking through okay, which are the steps. Now we can go obviously further, right? So now we can say we want to align this to the groups and to the people which actually needs to do this. So we can introduce now our uh, swim lane, our pool. So who is actually doing this? Let's say this here is a product um, team. But now we want to have the approval step and on someone else. So I can build as normal swim lanes, right? So I can build now my swim lane approach and I'll move this a little bit over. Want to make this a little bit bigger because we have a little bit spacing here to do. So approved price, approved product idea is maybe my um, product manager. And validate pricing might be in this case my finance department and then develop product to market is my product team and my last thing up here which we still need to define who does this this might be review product idea might be as well the product team and makes this a little bit nicer. So as you can see, we can obviously draw the pictures how we go and making this now a little bit nicer how we go this. So, and with no effort, we have now this scenario created. If, and if I don't like my connector here, I can move this around and build my different connections, how I want to make this and deploy this within here. So that's quite an easy scenario. Within all of these scenarios, we have clearly as well, different um, opportunity or possibilities with decision points, with different scenarios on gates, if it's inclusive, exclusive, it's a complex gateway. So it gives you the full capability of BPMN 2.0. I could bring now as well other artifacts in here and saying, okay, we need to have a database here to which database should this talk to, and I want to have this in a separate pool. So all these things are definitely possible to create. So the sky is the limit, how you want actually to create this. And let's say we align this here and saying, this is my systems, uh, systems, and let's say this sits in SAP. So I can actually do this and align this here now to SAP. And this is maybe if it comes from my product idea. So I want to have this connected to here. So whatever I want to create and want to make actually happen here, I can design this from an end to end perspective. I could design this as well from a purchase to pay. So big end to end pieces. So you have really the free capability here. So I save this now and I created this with this my first model from scratch. But not only this, we are already at the stage where we can import from BPMN currently, and we are working as well on the import in 2024 from Visio files. How does it look like? It's a similar approach, right? So if we are going back into our process models where we will see now my new product development, what I just added here, I need to go through the same uh, exercise, create a process model because I still need to create my governance around this. So if you are saying here, um, putting this into develop products and services and select this and saying develop new product and I take myself again, and in this case is Richard, who needs to be the expert. Um, developing products. And creates this. Now I can import this. So if I uh, take this now from a uh, scenario as an import file, I can select this file and I have a file 
here from the process manager scenario from my uh, download scenario. So if I go and download and search for my BPMN file and I have this here defined product concept, I want to import this and I import this. So it takes the whole scenario from the BPMN uh, from the BPMN file and takes it in there. So including the roles, including the st uh, uh, stages and so on. And guess what? Currently I could do this actually taking this from the um, process manager uh, design and going through a BPMN converter and put this into here as well. These scenarios will go much easier in the future. That's what I wanted to show you on BPMN modeling. Now let's move on to the next topic. Our next topic is process variation management. So what did we do in 2023? We are creating variation groups with existing processes. We are splitting variation processes into standalone processes and we copying have now the capability to copy a whole variation process set. Let's have a look how this actually looks like. So for this, I have a couple of scenarios um, prepared for you in advanced. So if you are going to my process group where this is now visible, uh, I have this under my uh, develop product and concepts. So I have a couple of scenarios here. So if I look for example into a variation cap uh, scenario where I have a current state and a future state and now say okay hang on. So this is my version one. Now I need to have a whole copy of the current state future state. So I can now copy the variation set. So again, we put this always under the cock wheel, under the industrial wheel scenario. So if I copy the variation set, so I duplicate the whole scenario times one. So this will just take a little bit and then it will occur in the same process group as copy off and I have my current state future state. So I could build a second scenario with current state future state if I want to. If I then actually think, okay, that's not necessary, now I can archive these variations as well. So I can archive this. In our archiving, we have now an easier way to do this. We check if anything is involved. I uh, don't need any more. And archive, and then this process is archived and we are uh, have this variation now inside the archive folder, which doesn't affect our license, which is a good thing. So if I go back into the process where I was before, as my current state, future state scenario in here. If you are now looking into the second scenario, um, splitting variation to standalone, and I do this out of my um, copy already, so I had this already made here because I archived my current state and I archive now as well um, my future state, but I could as well unlink from variation. So this unlink from variation makes it actually a standalone scenario. So if you are looking on unlinking, so I say yes. So this now gives me no variation reference anymore. This makes it my standalone process Obviously, what I need to do is my changing my process name because I still have my as is scenario here, but nothing is easier than that. Change this, I delete this out, save and publish. Okay, yeah, ready, save and publish, and it will have now my defined product concept with the version number 1.0 available as a standalone. So, which is awesome if you think about. Um, having current state, future state, and now want to have them as a standalone in the future state. And the good news is you don't lose your change log because everything still is there in the change history. The third thing is building a variation set from multiple existing processes. So we have seen in the past uh, customers of ours which had processes built for different locations for as you can see here uh, for New Zealand, for Japan and for Australia. So now what I can actually do, I can actually 
um, create a new variation. So if I select my New Zealand process and now I want to create variation and I make this an, um, a process specific variation. So this one, what I have here, it's clearly my variation uh, title is here for New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand process. And my variation expert is Jake Holmes. So I've now I add an additional variation and instead of now creating one from scratch, I want to pick one. So I use an existing process, so which gives me now access to the whole process library. And I can now select the process which I want to uh, go to. And in my case, this is a Japanese one. So I select the Japanese variation. And the next one is my variation what I want to use for our example here, which is our Australian one. So I'll select this as well. So we have a variation title here in New Zealand, text is here for Japan, and I just copy and paste this now. And my variation expert for Japan is Luca, and then Australia. Copy and paste this. And my variation expert for Australia is Philima. And now I create this. So what happened now is I have my New Zealand defined product concept uh, process. Now I have my New Zealand, Japan and Australia variation combined in one process. And as you can see, we have on the left hand side. These three processes went. So one thing what we need to do, we need to adjust the name because it can't be called New Zealand defined product concept. We want to take New Zealand out and save and publish. So making this happen. Now I combine three existing processes and brought them together into our variation group location for New Zealand, Japan and Australia. So that's a really great functionality to have instead of three single ones, I have clear ownership with the variation expert for Japan. In our case here, Luca is looking after this, but my global expert and my global owner is defined. The other benefit what we have now as well within this variation capability is we can always show comparison. So I can show now, give me the uh, comparison on screen to Australia. Here's my Japanese process and how are we actually comparing these steps in here? Hopefully you found this really helpful uh, on this scenario in here. And last but not least, we want quickly to have a look as well into process archiving. What changed here? Um, it was a long time coming. One of the things as a long term user of process manager, you might know the pain sometimes when you have linked processes, when you have these scenarios in there, there was always first you needed to unlink before you archive a process. Now we actually do this automatically behind the scenes. So if I now want to archive this specific variation in here, we could review affected processes. This might take a moment depending on the effective ones. So this is just linked in the background. This is easy. So I archive this obviously need a reason ready. Don't need needs this anymore. And I archive this and it goes then into my archive folder. And as a ProMaster, I have now access to this process uh, via the archive folder. And I could reinstate this if I need to uh, make this happen as well. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, quick overview, um, reasonable high level, what we did in 2023 for process manager. There are more and more things to come. Thank you for your attention and I wish you a really good start for 2024 and talk to you soon. Thank you very much.